Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and in today's video we're going to start talking about solar again. As you can see the roof of my garage build, it's up, I have a roof. So I can start thinking about solar panels again here at my new house. Okay so thanks for tuning into this video. As you can see behind me I'm sat up on the roof. This is the roof truss for my garage build and this is something I've been waiting for for nearly a year and a half since I moved. So it's been a year, nearly a year and a half since I did my past solar videos and that might be one of the reasons you became a subscriber to this channel. But obviously since I moved, decided it wasn't really feasible to have solar on the existing roof because of kind of dormer windows and what have you. So having this garage build was one of the key requirements for solar. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a bit about some of the thought processes I've been going through to make decisions about the solar I'm gonna have I've, none, I've now done the DNA request, so we'll see what gets approved, and there'll be a forthcoming video which talks about specifically what I'm gonna have installed. So let's start off with a little bit of background if you're new to the channel. So at my whole old house, I had a really large solar array really for a domestic house, nine kilowatt solar array. That was 30 300 watt Pimar panels, and they all connected back to a six kilowatt solar edge inverter. Now, one of the things I think is interesting, I've been making a little track of the cost of things and how things have kind of changed over is that five, five nearly maybe six years ago that I had solar installed at my last house. And so the solar edge system is more of a premium product, at least costs a little bit more than some of the other systems. And that basically solar system at my old house worked out to cost around £1,203 per kilowatt. Now that excludes battery storage, just purely the solar. So nine kilowatt solar array with a six kilowatt inverter, equivalent of 1,203 pounds per kilowatt. We'll come back to that number again in a moment. Now this roof is um, much smaller than the roof on my last house. I'm not gonna have any windows on the front. I'm gonna have some Veluxes on the back. So the front is all just gonna be for solar. And this house, actually its location is pretty good for solar. It's pretty much spot on south facing for where this roof is going to be and the roof itself is 7.72 meters wide so across the front here and then the roof truss up to the ridge is 4.8 meters high so when having this roof um, design in terms of the loads that it can take my original plan which we come to again towards the end of the video was to have in roof uh, solar panels we'll talk about that that about that in a minute um, but then i was having some some decisions about maybe I would change that and have on roof again because I could have a larger system. So had to do again some structural checks to make sure and confirm that this roof truss system could take the load of basically concrete roof tiles you know, front and back and have solar panels on the top and it can so just I know for any future person that owns this house if I ever decide to sell it, which I hope I ever don't, um, they could put um, full solar panels on top um, of the roof. So again in a future video I'm going to go through all the details uh, of what I've gone for but I just thought it's, it's good to get some ident identification really that you need to understand um, the load bearing of your roof structure before you get solar and your solar installer should probably do that anyway but I've decided after weighing everything up aesthetically cost and everything I am still going to go with uh, an in-roof solution so I'm going to have 12 in-roof panels and I think some of the largest panels I've seen are around 460, no, is it, yeah, about 460 watts, 450 watts, um, so that per panel, but they're quite hard to get hold of, um, so it probably won't be that much. Um, so it's gonna be 12 panels, probably around 5.22 kilowatts in terms of the solar array, which again is 30 odd percent less than my old nine kilowatt array, back to a, a five kilowatt inverter. Had I gone with on roof, I could have had nearly seven kilowatts. It was going to be um, 6.96 kilowatts if I'd gone for on roof solar with the size of this roof. But I was really worried about the wind shear. So again, another thing to consider when you have solar is, I think, um, I can't remember who defines the requirement, but you should have really 12 centimeters around the edging of the solar panels to 
account for kind of wind shear uplift. Essentially, all those solar panels is like a big sail on your roof. And with essentially 16 panels on the roof that would have given me the nearly seven kilowatts, I was I was really worried. It was really borderline, and in some cases, it, there was less than 20 centimeters. There it was nearly like 10, or sometimes less than 10, to have it. So I decided that instead of risk it, I'll go with the in-roof system. And that's what I decided to go for. So again, there'll be videos of the install going in as well, but just what I'd kind of give a bit of information on that. Obviously, because it's going to be larger than a 3.68 kilowatt system, I have to submit a G99 DNO request to make sure that the grid provider is going to be happy uh, with that size array. It's only a little bit really over the four, isn't it? So I'm, I'm relatively confident it will be approved. And I recently paid uh, last year for a local transformer upgrade as well. Um, so it should be good. In terms of the pricing though, just coming back to that kind of previous pricing of five years ago. So back then, you did pay VAT on solar, but it was only 5%. Obviously currently, the government has scrapped VAT um, temporarily on solar. So 0% on solar and 0% on the batteries as well. We'll come into batteries in a different video. But things haven't got cheaper in terms of solar. I think during, during COVID and post-COVID, obviously the demand seems to increase the people kind of look to how they're spending their money and investing on their house and again like i said before it was equivalent of um, 1203 pounds per kilowatt based on the numbers i'm looking at around 1705 pounds per kilowatt so that's a decent jump in, in price per kilowatt for something that you know technology expects to bring prices down as, it, as we move forward aren't we but um yeah, I thought I'd just share a little video of kind of where things are, show you a couple of diagrams of what the roof's going to look like. There'll be more videos in the future coming up. Obviously, the whole solar stuff. Um, this was uh, the aim of this was to be kind of like a dream garage. We'll see how that turns out at the end. So there'll be some stuff about the new garage as well, the new cave, and how I'm going to kind of set things up. That be coming later on in this year. I'm having all the shell built by builders, and then everything internal, everything I'm doing. Um, myself so please leave any questions or comments you have down below in the comment section uh, also feel free to check out the discord uh, channel as well if you want to kind of um, have kind of more interaction with myself uh, and other members of the Spectrum Geeks community you can support the channel in a couple of ways obviously you can become a YouTube Spectrum Geeks member 99 pence a month um, and you can cancel that whenever you want also if you think about changing energy providers you could use my Oxford Energy uh, link in the description if you do that you get 50 pounds credit to your bill so do i uh, and again just watching like and subscribing is a good support as well so yeah more videos to come on this roof structure in roof solar um, i guess the other thing i didn't mention in roof solar does tend to not perform quite as well as on roof solar as well because there's less airflow so the panels don't stay as cool which means they're not as efficient in peak heat but I decided again, aesthetically it looks better. Peak heat in this country is one week a year if we're lucky. I mean, right now it doesn't stop raining, does it? Even though I'm out here um, enjoying the sun at the moment. But yeah, I thought I'd drop in. It's been a while since we did the solar video. So more to come, more updates to come. Uh, I'm excited about hopefully what the install will look like and videos to come in the future, which I don't think some of it other people have done. So uh, might be a learning experience for myself. Uh, and you guys are viewers in terms of your future solar systems as well. So stay tuned. Uh, once the DNO is approved, I will come back, let you know what it is I'm having. And hopefully in a month or so, I'll have a roof on here. And solar will be happening. So thanks so much for watching. Until the next video, take care of yourself. Goodbye for now.